Yvonne Smith. Thanks for being in New York so that we could do this. You're, what are you doing tonight that you're here? Um, I'm actually in a band and we are playing tonight at National Underground. So just happened to be here and you're one of the first people on my short list of people in New York City that I would love to see while I'm here. So that's why I'm here. Oh, I'm so glad. Thank now you. we we met, I think, at NAVS, a North American mm -hmm. event, uh, several years ago. Yes. And I know you're a great vegan and you propose every aspect of it. But I, when I met you, I especially loved that you were doing something called the Traveling Vegetarian. Mm -hmm. And that, pe and everyone can still see those episodes. Exactly yeah. what was it? Um, it was a TV show about how to travel, you know, while vegan, basically. You know, just vegan food on the road. I, I would go to different restaurants and chronicle, uh, you know, talk to the chef, talk to the owner, talk to whoever was there um, who wanted to talk about, about vegan food. And, you know, one of the biggest excuses people have for not being vegan is because Oh, I could never do that. I travel too much. And my goal with the show was to show people that you can go anywhere and get vegan food. So, um, you know, there's still about, I think, six little vignettes available on YouTube. Um, they're also, of course, on my website, thetravelingvegetarian.tv. But you can find them on my YouTube channel as well, which is just Traveling Vegetarian. And you're in New York to be um, to singing. I mean, you have a, a, a career uh, yeah. that is quite significant and not only a singer but you're a songwriter. I am a songwriter yeah I haven't been doing that much songwriting lately honestly um, right now I'm actually singing backup in a band we're called the Captain Midnight Band and that's why we're here we've been touring um, it's a little mini tour we kind of went through we went through Kentucky and then Indiana then over to Ohio and then yesterday upstate New York today New York City tomorrow New Jersey and then we're headed back. How did you begin? How did I begin? Well, I became a vegetarian about 20 years ago, actually. Um, and you only look 20, but I know how old you are, but we're not going to tell anybody. <laughs> <That's> right, <it's laughs> a, uh, a long time ago, I got one of those uh, PETA magazines in the mail, and that's how I became a vegetarian, because I always considered myself an animal lover, but I wasn't making that connection. And, uh, you know, I got the magazine, looked at the pictures of what was happening to animals in factory farms and things like that, and I was like, I, I can't, I can't. I can't call myself an animal lover and still support this anymore. It was a personal thing for me. And I just, uh, so I became a vegetarian on the spot. And um, about six years ago, really, I, I wanted to lose weight and I wanted to, um, I wanted my face to clear up and I was really looking to do more TV and media and I knew that I had to slim down. And I was reading some McDougal literature, um, had a couple books. And once I read that, it really made a lot of sense to me. And once I went vegan, uh, my whole world opened up. I mean, I stopped getting menstrual cramps. I stopped getting headaches. My face cleared up. I lost two sizes. I mean, it was just all this stuff just... And I really think more than anything, it was just the dairy. You know, it was just the, the dairy was really just not agreeing with me. And I didn't know it all these years. So when I finally was able to let that go, um, you know, the eggs weren't really doing me any favors either. I was actually vomiting after breakfast when I would eat eggs. It just... I couldn't figure it out. I never made the correlation for the longest time. Finally realized, why am I throwing up? And it was because I was eating eggs. So really now um, that I don't eat dairy and eggs, I, could never, I can't even imagine going back at this point. My body is so much happier. I look young. I look vibrant. You know, I have tons of energy and I just... I can't even imagine going back. It was such a beautiful thing. And then add to that what I found out about what is happening to cows and to chickens and all that kind of stuff for dairy and eggs. It was it just made it an easy decision to stick with it. But what you bring up, I think, is so amazing that I see so many people that are so upset at animal abuse that someone would kick a dog or somebody would be upset that a cat is mistreated but yet they'll have steak that night. Do you find that people are beginning to or do you feel it's just at a spot where they, if you name it and pet it it's okay but it has nothing to do with the animal on your plate? It's really a tough question because I think that once people see what's going on they're really upset. You know, if you show someone a video of what goes on in a factory farm or even old McDonald's farm, which doesn't even exist anymore, you know, it, it, it really, really grabs them and they don't know what they've been doing. But so many of them just think, you know, it's, it's like what Melanie Joy talks about with, with uh, speciesism. It really is just, you know, a carnism like she talks about. I'm sorry. There's speciesism and carnism. But I think, right. I think that what she's talking about is dead on. You know, we just don't think about it. We don't want to think about it. Um, you know, even though we know that that if you if you're looking at intelligence, which to some people 
I mean, I don't think it matters. I don't think the brain size even matters if you look at how intelligent a parrot can be compared to some people I know. You know what I mean? It's like I don't even believe we in the brain get size correlation. Sure. <laughs> but I mean, I, I don't know, man. It just, it, uh, it is upsetting to be with people who are animal lovers. You know, they just, they're like, oh, you're vegan? Oh, well, I'm such an animal lover. And they'll go on and on about how they treat their dog. And it's like, well, what if you had a little pig? Would you still be so excited about your bacon every morning? And bacon has become a national obsession lately. I mean, it's 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 yeah. in everything and it's everywhere. And I mean, even people that I think of as really evolved and very conscious are obsessed with bacon. And it's like, I just... Me, I, I just you know what I've started it. to say to people about that is that they really are looking for that smoky taste, that they can buy a bottle of liquid smoke, but there really right. have become some couple good alternatives oh, in the sure. vegan community with bacon strips by Light Life, and then there's a Tempeh oh, one. Yeah. Well, I mean, Jason and, Sellers, who used to be the chef for Laughing Seed in Asheville and now has his own restaurant called Plant, he can make a shiitake mushroom taste exactly like bacon and people are always like oh well, you just don't remember what bacon tastes like and I'm like no I'm pretty sure I do mm -hmm. and I mean I, I was never a big bacon fan anyway even when I ate meat because the big whole strips of fat in it completely always grossed me out even when I still <laughs> ate meat just this big oh it makes me nauseated to think about it but I understand I understand what you're saying about the smoky flavor but you can take a shiitake mushroom and texturally and flavor wise make it almost so dead on to bacon that it's Does almost creepy. Does he use some liquid smoke, do you think? You know, I'm not sure what his recipe is. I think he actually sent it to me. I can't remember what he put in it, honestly. But, um, oh, now you have us all wondering. I know. What, is, what does he do? So he has, what does he do to the mushrooms? Everybody has to go to the Laughing Seed. And, or not well, the, it not, used to be Laughing Seed. Now he has a place called Plant. Plant so, in yeah, Nashville. Which I haven't even been Nashville, to Tennessee? Yet. Asheville. Asheville. Asheville, North Carolina. Oh, Asheville, North yeah. Carolina. Oh, my goodness. Jason is an amazing an So amazing his chef. phone is going to ring off the hook now, we hope. I hope so. I hope so. I mean, he, he was my interview. If you go to uh, the Tyler Vegetarian videos, he was the one that I interviewed for Laughing Seed. And then we became really good friends after that. He's just an awesome person and a great chef. And, you know, I always have a place to stay when I'm in Asheville because of Oh, that's his, nice. His what is his wife. name? So, Jason Sellers. Jason He's Sellers. He's just awesome. One of Do you have a go-to dish? Honestly, I've been, uh, I've been eating a lot of Trader Joe's food. I'm in total transition right now. I just sold my house. I'm staying in a friend's apartment oh. or basement apartment in their house. You know, I can't, I'm not really spending a whole lot of time cooking these days, but between Trader Joe's and Whole Foods, you know, which is basically what we have in Nashville, and we do have a small little health food place on the east side called the Turnip Truck, and they've got a new location in uh, the Gulch, but as far as Nashville is concerned, it's really so much easier, convenience-wise, to uh, just grab something from Trader Joe's and cook it at home. <laughs> we have a, a couple places. We do have a place called uh, the Wild Cow, which is a really nice uh, vegetarian restaurant in town, and we've, we've got, Nashville's coming along it's really getting I'm, I'm proud of it I've been there for 12 years and I'm really amazed and very proud of how well it's coming you know it's like people don't look at you like you have two heads anymore when you say you want when you say vegan. you're vegan yeah actually know what that means now you're <laughs> actually okay with it and you don't feel like I know that health reasons you're vegan and for animal reasons you're vegan has the environmental aspects had an influence absolutely. at all on you absolutely i mean especially when you think about the rainforest i mean to me and when you think about just hundreds of thousands of acres depleted just so that we can raise cattle you know i mean it's 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 so mind-boggling to me i got accused recently of having a limited world view by being vegan because this person was talking about how other countries think that we're crazy in the United States for being vegan because it's something that like rich white people do and all that kind of stuff and I, I was so floored by that because I thought who has the limited world view I'm thinking about the entire planet you know this is something that I can do for the entire planet every single day maybe three times a day every bite every bite I can do something for the planet and to me that does not constitute a limited world view sure I may not have traveled to a lot of third world countries which I desire to do I really do desire to expand my world view but this is something veganism is all about saving the planet to me you know it's it, you know people ask me why I'm vegan I I need 
I don't even know how to start because I have five, six, seven, eight reasons for being vegan. I mean, it's not just one. It's not for the animal rights. I mean, it is for the animal rights, but it's not just for that. It's not just for that. This is just, there's so many reasons. I mean, spiritual reasons are a huge one for me as well. Um, I feel like I don't want to bring the energy of a tortured animal into my body. You know, this is my body. And that's something a lot of people aren't thinking about. I mean, how does that affect you when, you know, dairy, milk comes from a mother whose baby has been stolen from her, a mother who I've seen video of cows crying when their babies are stolen from them. And, you know, the milk that comes out of that body is coming from a grieving mother. Now, do I want to put that inside my cells? And people criticize, oh, you still drink and blah, blah. Yes, I'm drinking alcohol. You know what? We all have our things. But it's vegan. It is vegan, you know. We all have our things. And, and exactly. But um, I just, I can't, I can't put the energy of, of a grieving mother in my body. And I can't, I can't eat a hamburger that I know was, A, came from an, an abused animal, but B, may have been raised on a plot of land that used to house thousands and thousands and thousands of trees that may even have the cures to every disease that we possibly even have here, which is what the rainforest is full of, and we're knocking it down to raise cattle? Mm -hmm. For what? Mm -hmm. Just to serve a five-minute pleasure experience that's gone, and now you've got all that junk in your body that's sitting on your hips, and, and I, I just, there's really nothing that I can do to justify that in my brain at all. Mm -hmm. So when people ask why I'm vegan, I'm like, why, how could I not be? How mm -hmm. can I not be? I know too much. I always take, tell people too, I've taken the red pill and I can't go back. <laughs> I know way too much mm -hmm. and most people don't. And so I really, mm -hmm. I have to be sympathetic. And well, that's the thing. I think sometimes we as vegans, we feel so righteous. And, and I think we actually should feel righteous. I've had to bite my tongue in I don't know how many situations and sometimes I wonder later, should I have said something? You know, it's like, but when it comes down to it, nobody wants to be around that self-righteous vegan that is looking down their nose at them and ma making comments and all that stuff. And yet, have I ever been that person? Yes, I will never claim to Me say too. that I have not been that person and I've made a lot of mistakes along the way, mm -hmm. for sure. And one of the things I tell people too when they're looking at being vegan is you can't ever be a perfect vegan, so you need to forgive yourself and you need to forgive the people around you. You can't be absolutely perfect. And one thing you told me years ago was you have to live in the world. And that is something that, that I think of all the time. I mean, it's, it's, it's a challenge. Knowing what we know to bite our tongues. And knowing what we know around us and you know, to just sit there and watch everybody munching on their animals and to not say anything, it's very difficult. Yeah. But it, you're not going to make any converts by being the person no one wants to be around. If, mm -hmm. you, if you look unhappy, people don't want to be like you. But if you're happy and vibrant and it's like, wow, hey, no, this just, you know, runs off my back. I'll be cool. Don't worry about me. I will definitely find something to eat because you know how that is when everybody gets all worried. Like, oh, God, is she going to be all right? Oh, God, this is, oh, is she going to, you know, don't worry about me. I got me. Yeah. I know what yeah. I'm doing. I've been doing this a long time. Yeah. I will be fine. Mm -hmm. I always say I've, I've traveled the world and I've never not had a meal <laughs> where I ever, wherever yeah, I went. Clearly I'm not starving to death, so <laughs> right. I'm doing something all right, you know what I mean? But also I think it may be another helpful thought to keep in mind is that we weren't vegan before we were. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely. I used to, you know, pepperoni pizza and milkshakes and all those things were some of my favorite And so foods. we're meeting people at that point. And so we need to be gentler Absolutely. and kinder. I agree. And if you talk to some people, they'll say, no, that's not true. You know, we've got to just fight for the animals and all that. But, you know, sometimes I think that it's better to live by example. It could be that they just haven't thought about it deeply sure. enough yet. And we can be a vehicle for that. Sure. And I've actually stopped conversations where if I'm, you know, if we're sitting down to eat and everybody's eating meat and people start asking me, so how come you don't eat meat? It's like, maybe we should talk about this once we're done eating. Because yeah. this is, I don't want to feel, I don't want anyone to feel attacked. I don't want anyone to feel yeah. uncomfortable in that situation they're gonna be like oh god remember when that vegan you know, was sitting with us that's and, very oh. clever because not only are you being polite but at the same time you're probably making more of a statement than if you actually started in talking about it i just don't want anybody to ever think that i'm not happy i don't want anybody to ever think that i'm deprived because 
I am an extremely happy person. Anybody who knows me knows that. I'm a, I'm very positive. I'm very happy, and I'm thrilled to be vegan. You know, and people always do that. Oh, I'm sorry, you can't eat this. Oh, Don't ever feel sorry no. for me for something that I can't eat. I do not choose to and eat. And you're so happy plate. not to have it. Absolutely. Or you would have it. <laughs> so I mean, yes. The uncomfortable situation happens every once in a while, and some people, you know, in the South, what I've found a lot is that people have a hard time committing to veganism because of their families, mm. and because of, you know, when you, a lot yes. of them were raised poor, and when you have food on your plate, you eat that food, you know, it's like that's what you eat, and when you go to a nice restaurant and you can afford that, you're going to get the nicest thing on the menu because that's kind of the way you were raised. I've run into that a little bit, too, and nobody wants to say rude and say no to their old, their grandmother who's been making them biscuits with all kinds of stuff in them that I would never eat. The lard and the... Oh, yeah, yeah. the gravy and the, all that stuff. They could never say no to their grandmother's biscuits. That's fine. I just... I have that commitment. And to me, if, if you're going to offer me something that doesn't go with my values, I am really okay with saying no thank you. And I'm very appreciative that you're offering it to me. What is your choices. vision for the future? I, be, I definitely have a vegan vision in my world, in my world view, for sure. I don't think we have a choice. I don't think there is going to be a choice at some point. I, I just don't, what we're doing right now is not sustainable and that is that is not even arguable to, to me. That it is, what we're doing right now is not sustainable, period. Therefore, we are going to have to evolve at some point. I know that scares a lot of people to hear, but you know, with all the meat analogs right now too, I mean, we're going to get to the point where we don't even miss anything. Thank you so, Thank you so much. much.